Okay. Uh, all right, so this contactor here That should be driving this fan, and it's not. All right, we're gonna start with a contactor. This is a stupid big three-phase motor that I'm not gonna have, but this contactor is pretty roached up. So, we're gonna start here. We'll see if the new contactor is gonna work. The slow ambient strategy, so you have, since it's a three-phase <clears throat> motor, we have two of the legs being broken by this contactor. So this contactor is triggered by 24 volts. It's 24 volts is interrupted by two pressure switches in parallel. So either compressor can ask for the fan via either this switch here, or I believe it's this switch here. Either one of those closes will send the voltage over and close this contactor. So this, there's a lot of room for upgrades. I'll just leave it at that. All right, new contactor's in. It pulled right in as soon as the pressure switch hit where it's supposed to hit. Kicked right out. So I think this contactor, well, this contactor was the problem, which is best case scenario. But that's the kind of thing, you know, we wanna check those on the maintenances. Those covers come off and if they look bad, this is best case scenario where this motor seems to be fine. It's just the contactor, but you can have an issue where this contactor can take out the motor. So looks like we're cooling again. Yep, our primary issue was definitely this contactor. Uh, these are fan cycles as seen through our refrigerant pressure probe. Yeah, this fan's coming in and out, just like it should. So it wouldn't hurt to check the second stage uh, and make sure it's got enough refrigerant and its sides working right. But as far as our primary stage goes, things are looking just fine. Also, as to why this contactor is so roached, just look how many times it turns on and off. Right, compared to like the compressors, they've just been on this whole time. They're on a single cycle count. This is gonna be, you know, a hundred cycles per hour. That's a lot of in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. All right, we are getting ready to test the second circuit. So we're connotating, but not out the top of the trap because she froze because there's no heat tape. All right, just looking, that's the outdoor fan we just changed. Secondary compressor. Primary compressor's looking pretty rough. And our blower fan. Let's see if we have another contactor for that. All right, <clears throat> that's the new compressor contactor. That's the old compressor contactor. This wasn't a problem today, uh, but since we're here, it makes sense to just get that swapped before it is a problem when you lose an expensive compressor over a minimal part. This is cycling quick, but I just ran both of these circuits and tested them individually, so everything should be running right. But yeah, that is fast. All right, we have an intermittent issue, and I happened to catch it right as I was getting all my shit off the roof. This is going way too fast. Do, 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 do. So I just took a screen recording. I have a probe on each circuit. Neither one is getting to the 400 uh, or down to the 300. So one of these two switches is fucking up. So I'm gonna go see what I have for low ambient kit replacements because this is not. All right, these pressure switches are failing. They're working sometimes and not other times. We were just cycling, do, 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 do. So we watched them work, we watched them not work. We're gonna upgrade these to some pressure transducers. Uh, this is a three phase motor, so we have to use an ICM 334. So 
we had a contactor that was just switching two of the legs. So we're gonna go over here. We got our motor hooked up, but now we need to do a little bit of rewiring. We got some 14 gauge. These are currently 16, so it'll be okay. So now we need to get, the fan is the load. So now we need to get our line power over to here, here, and here. Or, you know, a subsidiary of there. But. All right, we got the low ambient kit out. So we have everything but the pressure transducers run. I read this too fast before. So it is line load, line load, line load. So <clears throat> our lines are coming from over here, right? One, two, three, and our load to our motor. One, two, three, go down here. So we took our power off of where the motor landed. So one of the motor legs landed here. Thus our power lands there. I'm trying to kind of clean up all this. I can come back with my zip ties. Then we have a power leg here and a power leg back there. Those go up and over. Almost there. We got to add our low ambient temperature and our pressure transducers. Our low voltage, we pulled again. This one was getting 24 volts when it was time for the fan. So we left that as the Y1 and then we added a Y2 uh, piggybacked off the contactor. All right, <clears throat> we just got our first pressure transducer on there. We're just swapping the swivel tees because not always the time. Uh, I put a little bit of nylog on these and then just thread them on and it really makes life a lot easier. Then we're gonna tighten that with a wrench. Well, a set of wrenches to backseat and all that shit, but yeah, nylon makes that so much easier. So when you're doing more than one pressure transducer, I recommend color coding. So like that one is going to be our first stage. Now the second stage is going to be yellow. First stage is going to be blue. So that when you're over here, if you're doing testing, you can figure out without having to trace it all back, which switch. I do the same thing if you have more than one condenser fan. Uh, mark them and save yourself a headache. All right. <clears throat> These just take more effort than I always think they're going to. But we have our pressure transducers in, right? We have a blue and a yellow, and they're marked on the green wire, right? So we have the blacks need to go together. I just went ahead and dead-ended them because getting these to go in here without there being wires sticking out everywhere is a bitch to get more than one in. Uh, red, same deal. We've got a deadhead. And then we have our individual probes one and two yellow correlates to this circuit uh, so we'll actually switch those because this is our secondary so yeah so we'll just go ahead and switch those but that's where the color really comes in clutch because the yellow probe is on my secondary compressor i think we're there um a few more zip ties but we just got our ambient temperature probe strapped up with a uh what do we call that mounting zip tie should double check all of our stuff here we'll put a set of probes on uh we'll probably just put one on each compressor just to watch these probes and see how they're gonna do but yeah that's uh the three two four three three four by ICM. All right, <clears throat> it's time. So this is in, we double checked all of our wiring. We got our sensors, our, our smart probes next to our new pressure transducers. Everything should be good to go. Let's uh, give this bad boy some power. All right, our blower's on. No status. So now we'll wait for the unit to call. And we'll see what happens. We did set this around 320 as a starting point. We'll kind of go from there. All right, we are using the uh, phone for the pressure transducers. So we'll have to do a little screen share at the same time.
but it's working. See the lights in there. All right. So we're getting weird readings. Just looking at the graph. I think that the ambient probe which was sitting here was getting heat from the compressors and going back into summer mode for a minute we're gonna try to run this outside the cabinet because it's cold as shit out here it's actually starting to snow so it shouldn't be doing that all right we're working way better now that our ambient temperature probe isn't in the compressor cabinet so there's a screen recording of on the left side before we moved it and then after it came back on. We have a delay in the second compressor, that's why the second line uh, isn't staying up with the first line, but after the five minute delay, it'll come in and we'll continue this test. All right, both compressors are in, we're working way better. So we had messed up originally and had that ambient temperature sensor inside the compressor cabinet. Can't do that, it's gotta be outside here or it doesn't know how freaking cold it is. So we are working way better. Just got another screen recording of the second compressor coming on and it kind of catching up uh, to that other one pressure wise. And now they're both in the range that they need to be. So this 334 uh, is a fancy peanut switch setup, but with, you know, a better relay for the job and way more accurate sensors versus the on off pressure transducer. This is actually, we were able to dial this in. We use a screwdriver, which is how it should be to set our target set point. So it's better than a peanut switch because it's adjustable. It's watching two circuits with a better uh, sensing technology than just the light switch style peanut switch. All right, we're good to go. Just checking the sequence operation. When there's a new call, we will energize for 10 seconds as a hard start. So when this thing fires on, it's gonna run the fan straight for 10 seconds while it evaluates the ambient temperature. If it thinks the ambient temperature is below 50 or whatever, 10 Celsius, uh, the motor will be energized. Uh, basically, it's gonna come in and out around its set point. When the pressure is 15 PSI below the set pressure, it'll turn off. When it's 15 above, it'll turn on. So that's what we have here. This unit's been fine-tuned. We're using two pressure transducers to control this three-phase motor with an ICM-334. But yeah, we're good to go. It's starting to snow. Unit is cooling. <laughs>